Welcome to QuickBooks 2021 new features. Should you upgrade to QuickBooks 2021? My name is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University. And so uh, QuickBooks 2021 just came out recently and they've got a couple of new features really designed to streamline some things, make th some things a little bit easier. Now, a couple notes about upgrading to QuickBooks 2021. Uh, in general, you don't need to really upgrade, uh, you know, except every three years. So every three years, QuickBooks stops supporting uh, the version that is three years prior. Now, if you don't use the support and if you don't use the payroll function in QuickBooks Desktop, then you really don't necessarily need to upgrade. Some people like to upgrade every year. That's totally fine. Uh, but again, if you don't use the payroll function within QuickBooks or you don't use QuickBooks support, you know, you can get away with using QuickBooks 2014, 15, 16, 17, okay? Now, the basic functionality in each one of these programs is the same, meaning, you know, if you're uh, creating invoices, if you are reconciling your bank statement, you are recording expenses, you know, those same basic functions really never change because those are basic accounting. Uh, and they have not changed those in a number of years, okay? Now, a couple of things, though, that they have changed in QuickBooks 2021, again, to hopefully make your life a little bit uh, easier, is the first one is the bank feeds, okay? So if, if you have used the bank feeds in QuickBooks Desktop, you know there's something called the Express Mode, and they have now added what's called the Advanced Mode, okay? So you can uh, create a little bit better rules. It's supposed to be a little bit simpler. And so let's walk through that here. So if you go up to your banking drop down menu and you go over to bank feeds, and we'll just go to the bank feed center, you'll see that this is going to pop up and say advanced bank feeds, a faster and improved way to categorize your bank data. Okay. Now you have to turn this on. Okay. So you're going to go to your preferences. And so you can click this and it's going to take you to preferences. If, if you're not familiar with where this is, Okay, if I hit cancel and I go up to the edit drop down menu, you're going to find preferences right there. Okay, so you go to the checking option and go to company preferences and you're going to see down here you've got express mode, classic mode, uh, which is the old one or advanced mode. Okay, so we're going to click on advanced mode new in QuickBooks desktop 2021 and we're going to click OK. Okay, and it's going to tell you you've got to close all the windows to change this preference. And so we're going to let it close all the windows and then we're going to go back up to banking and we're going to go to bank feeds and the bank feed center. Okay. Again, the pop-up's going to come up. It says, okay, you can learn more. You can skip. Uh, you can say, don't show this again. And we're going to skip this. Okay. So this is the layout of the advanced bank feed. Okay. Now you'll see here that you've got uh, recognized, partially recognized, unrecognized, or added to register. Okay. And you've got your various accounts up here. You can choose the bank and credit card drop down here. You can add an account over here. Okay. So we're going to look at this one because this has transactions pending review. All right. So there's a couple things you can do here. You can check uh, multiple of these. So it's supposed to recognize these a little bit better in this advanced version. And if you check off multiple, you can go to the batch actions and you can ignore, add, or modify. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uncheck these, but let's go over here and you'll see that you have this drop down menu here. You can add more details. You can match to existing transactions or ignore. Okay, so ignore might be uh, if it's something that maybe downloaded in duplicate, maybe you've already added it to QuickBooks and you just don't even need to, you're not going to match it, just ignore it. You can do that as well. So if you choose match to existing transactions, you'll see that it brings up this other window and you can match it to a bill or some other transaction that may be already in QuickBooks. Okay, so this generally happens when, uh, let's say that, uh, you enter things in your register uh, or you pay a bill and you go ahead and, and, and record that you paid the bill and uh, it did not automatically match and it just clicked add because it doesn't recognize it. You're going to choose that so you can match it to the transaction. So that's very, very important to do 
so that you don't add a transaction but have already recorded it in QuickBooks, that means you will double up uh, that expense or deposit or whatever it is, okay? And if we choose uh, a deposit, let's say here, and we wanna match to an existing transaction, it's gonna bring up your invoices uh, or other deposits that you've made in QuickBooks. And again, uh, it's supposed to be a little bit easier to use and a little bit more streamlined. It's supposed to recognize things a little bit better. Uh, and, it, and you also can set up a uh, little bit different rules here. Okay, so if we go to add rule, um, it's a little bit simpler layout. You can, you know, let's say it description begins with, uh, you know, it, it could be anything. And you can rename the payee to a certain vendor. You can categorize it, which account, and classify it in a class. Okay, so it gives you a little bit more flexibility in the rules that you set up for the downloaded transactions. Okay, so that is feature number one, this advanced um, bank feed function in QuickBooks. And again, you have to go and turn that on in your preferences menu. And of course, when you do go to the bank feeds, it's going to pop up and remind you uh, to use that new feature. Okay, now another one, which I think is kind of cool, now, would I use this all the time? I don't know. It's receipt management. And uh, so what they've done here, so if, you, if you're familiar with QuickBooks Online, you know, you've got the app and you can, you know, upload receipts or take pictures of them. Well, they've added that functionality now to QuickBooks Desktop. Now, what you have to do, and let me go over to this here. If you go to the vendors drop down menu, uh, you are going to see this option here that says receipt management. Okay. So I'm going to go to receipt management. Uh, this screen here, and it has to think for just a second. Uh, and the reason is because this is connecting to online. So what you have to do is you have to go and download an app, okay? Now, the app is called QuickBooks Desktop, all right? You don't want to just get the normal QuickBooks um, app on your phone, and they have it for Apple and Android, etc. But this is called QuickBooks Desktop, and what you do is you have to first, you know, when you go in here, it's going to ask you to log into your QuickBooks account. All right. And so you log into your account. And then when you download the app, you can connect it to your QuickBooks desktop file. All right. It's going to ask you, it's going to say, hey, you have these QuickBooks desktop files. Which one do you want to connect to? And so you connect it. And uh, then what you can do is take a picture of a receipt and it will upload here automatically, all right? And so when you have this receipt, all right, you'll be able to uh, name the vendor. It's supposed to be able to read it. Now you can see here that I did uh, upload a receipt and it does take a little while to process. So if I click on this, you know, it'll say can take up to 15 minutes. Once the receipts are processed, you can refresh and review them. OK, so it does take a little bit. I, I did upload this probably 20 minutes ago and I still don't see it here. So maybe it's running a little bit slow, uh, but it is kind of a nice feature when you're out and about. If you're out in the field and you can take pictures of receipts, have them upload to here and you can specify, you know, uh, where it goes and what account it goes to. And then when you download the bank transactions, you can match it to that. Uh, if you've already recorded it, you can also match it here. Uh, which would show up when uh, the receipt processes. Okay, so this is kind of a neat function. Uh, they're starting to make this more and more integrated, kind of like a, an online, uh, a QuickBooks Online, but uh, still using the desktop. Okay, so that's feature number two. Now, uh, feature number three, which I think is really good, and and it's you know surprisingly uh, they. It's taken them a while to come out with this. I'm not sure why it's taken so long, uh, but you can now send auto uh, statements and invoices to customers. So statement or statements or invoice reminders, you can have them automatically sent to customers. Now, the way that they do this, okay, so we want to go to the customer drop down menu and you look uh, down here, payment reminders. Okay, so you're gonna see review and send payment reminders, which you could always do, but now you can schedule and you can also do what's called manage customer groups, all right? So groups, customer groups are a new thing in QuickBooks 2021. And you'll see here, I set up a sample one. 
uh, called contractors, but let's go through this uh, quickly so I can show you. We'll, we'll call this one uh, residential. Make sure I spell that right, residential. You can put in a description down here. You don't have to, uh, but we'll call that residential. We're gonna click next. And so what you do is you, you can choose. You can say, okay, um, let's say, uh, you know, we'll call this again, residential, maybe not be the best name, but let's say open balance is uh, greater than, okay? And we're gonna say, $100. All right. And we're going to add this. Okay. So we say select a field, open balance greater than $100. So you can add multiple things here. Okay. If you want to put in a bunch of different, you know, uh, maybe they're residential customers, they have an open balance greater than $100. So let's say that. Let's say customer type. And we will say equals and we'll choose residential okay and so if i add this so now i've got customer type equals residential with an open balance greater than 100 dollars. okay and i click next and so it's going to tell me okay here are all the customers you have uh, that meet that criteria okay now you've got a checkbox up here that says automatically add new or remove existing customers based on fields and values selected in this group that's really really important because you want these to be able to automatically update. Now, if you do uncheck one of these, and I'm not going to in this one, but if you uncheck or check again, it's going to come up and say, you know what, now that you have edited this, you are going to have to manually add these going forward. Okay. Which, you know, if you've got a bunch of groups going manually adding those, it's going to be a real pain. Okay. So let's just click finish. Okay. It's created successfully. We hit OK, and you'll see here it's got an A and an M. The A means it updates automatically, and the M requires manual updates. Okay, so especially if you're going to send invoice reminders, you really want this group to update automatically. Okay, so let's go back to, we're going to go to the customer drop down menu, and I'm going to go down to payment reminders. All right, so we're going to say schedule payment reminders. So let me close out of this real quick. I've got this uh, group there. So let me go back up here and say customers, payment reminders, and we're going to schedule payment reminders. Okay. All right. So you'll see here, I played around with this a little bit, payment reminders, and I'm not sure about this function yet, but it's almost as if you have to, you have to set up a group first, and then you can set up uh, send reminder to contractors. Okay, so we're going to change this though. All right, so I'm going to say residential. All right, send reminders to residential when an invoice is, uh, and then you can add things. Okay, so um, I've got five days before the due date. Send this reminder five days before the due date of the invoice. What should the email say? Now you can, you can customize this. All right, so right now it says reminder invoice number, which will fill in from Rock Castle Construction, uh, and you could say dear. So and so, this is just a quick reminder that invoice, et cetera, will be due on. We look forward to receiving your payment. Let us know if you have any questions. Okay. So we're going to say, okay, that sounds fine. You know, uh, and then I've got one day after the due date that says, just a reminder, we haven't received payment. So these come up automatically. Okay. But you can edit these and change them any way you like. Okay. Now let's say send reminders to residential when an invoice is five days. Okay. Now, what you can do here is you can turn this off, you can turn it on, you can set up a new schedule, uh, let's say for a statement, okay? And we're gonna select the customer group. What it does here is when you select the customer group, it names it that, all right? And so you can add a reminder. So these are statements. Uh, when do you wanna send this reminder statement day? We'll say um, the, 30th of every month. Okay. What should be the statement period statement period? Let's choose. Um, uh, let's say all to date. All right. We want everything going on there. All right. What invoice details do you want to include? We let's say the item details and the memo and the due date. How would you want your statement to look like or what? Yeah. 
So statement template, you know, you can uh, choose if you have your own uh, statement template within QuickBooks, you can customize it. And then an email template. All right, we have no email templates in there. So we want to edit one, add one so that we have an email template. Okay, and you want to generate a separate statement for each customer job. Okay, so we hit OK. Uh, you can't add a reminder if the email template is unavailable. Okay, so I, I would need to add an email template for the statement. I'm not going to do that in this video, but that's pretty straightforward to do. Okay, so that's how you set these up. What I did notice, though, is uh, like if I do a new schedule here, and let's say that it's um, uh, a statement, and I want to send it to my contractors group, okay? So let's just say I do that, and then I hit save. Now, you can't have two of these named the same. So it's almost as if you have to set up different ones for different groups, okay? It says, what or more reminder schedules have the same name? Update to duplicate names and try again. You say, okay. Okay, and if we click on that, you can actually change it. So you want to make sure, like, if you, if you choose the group, it's going gonna, it's gonna to add that name uh, to it. But if we say um, contract door instead of with an S, okay, you can add that and then you can save, okay? Schedule's been saved successfully and those will automatically uh, send out for you. You can set them up to automatically send out. They can send reminders, uh, et cetera. So uh, lots of neat features on here uh, in QuickBooks 2021. Those are some of the, the, the I say bigger um, updates to QuickBooks 2021. There are a couple of other things. You can uh, send a payment receipt where you can customize it to make it look like your other uh, forms in QuickBooks, uh, such as invoices and statements, etc. And there are a couple other minor ones, but these are the big features. Now, if you need these features, then, uh, you know, it may make sense to upgrade to QuickBooks 2021. Otherwise, there's really no rush to sit there and update or upgrade to the new software, just like any other year when a new release comes out. Um, I like to, you know, maybe wait a little bit till they get some of the bugs out. It's been out for a little bit. There's updates to it uh, and then possibly uh, purchase it if you need it for your business. Uh, otherwise, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please give it a like. Also head over to the QuickBooks University uh, the website is qbuniversity.org, where I've got the training programs to teach you everything you need to know, how to learn QuickBooks, what to do, how to set up your company file, record transactions, etc. And I also answer your personal questions. Thanks so much.